What if I told you that there was a place that you can find the best and newest camera gear, the best techniques to make a movie, and the best kind of color science that would make your movie the most beautiful? It's called YouTube. But none of that mattered if your story was trash. One of the most popular phrases in filmmaking, and especially YouTube, is that story is king. Yet, when you look at YouTube, it's just nothing but gear and all the technical bits of filmmaking, and not so much the story end of filmmaking. Yes, having a nice camera and a good lens and nice lighting is important, but storytelling is, if not the most important tool in our toolbox as filmmakers and creatives when it comes to making our movies on the internet. Whether we're making a vlog, a tutorial, or a narrative film, the way we structure and present our stories can make all the difference when it comes to how engaging and impactful that story is to our audience, those who watch these videos on here on YouTube. But with so many different types of content on YouTube, how do we craft a compelling story that stands out and resonates with viewers? First, it's important to understand the key elements of a good story. Every great story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And each of these sections serves a specific purpose. The beginning of a story sets the stage. It introduces the characters and the world that they live in. And in that moment, that's your chance to grab your audience's attention and then set the tone for what's to come. The middle of your story is where the action is. This is where you're able to develop the conflict. Asterisk here, you need conflict. From good to bad, you need some sort of conflict because that's what tells a good story. And at that point, you can also introduce twists throughout the conflict towards the resolution of your story that'll keep your audience engaged and hopefully invested to the later outcome. This is where the fun begins. The end is the resolution of your story. And that's also very, very important because you can have a great intro and a great conflict set up, but if the ending is not good, then it's just a crap story because it leaves your audience just like, why did we go through all that for this? You felt like that. An ending of your story brings closure to your audience. You know that phrase, it's all about the journey, not the destination? It's about both when it comes to storytelling. So how do you apply these principles to your YouTube videos? One approach is to think about your video as a mini story within a larger narrative. And one problem that I find on YouTube, a lot of content is throwaway content. It's one use. It's a single serve video. But when it comes to like movies and TV shows, they kind of become repetitive in our life. Case in point, The Office. <laughs> I've watched that series at least 10 times. Whether you're growing your channel or you're trying to make it a living and you want it to keep going, you want to make things that people come back to. Maybe not necessarily that specific video, but you want people to come back for the next video you post. And it's important because it's like a whole section in the YouTube analytics of recurring viewers. So like for example, The Mandalorian. And each episode is a segment of that story arc. But what's interesting about TV shows like that, the ending always leaves you wanting more. It always leaves you with the question, what's next? So that's something that I've been trying to dabble with with the YouTube videos, is have a good beginning of whatever I'm talking about, a really interesting journey of the video from four minutes to 10 minutes or even longer, and then having a nice closure of that video, but leaving room to have a little question that will keep people having a curious thought of what is he gonna talk about next, you know? It's more interesting that way, at least in my opinion. So when it comes to your channel, so whether you're making a vlog or a tutorial, there's gonna be that beginning, middle, end. And that happens with every video, at least it should. For example, in the vlog, the beginning might be setting up the premise for the day's activities. Yesterday I left a drone on a rooftop. Today, gonna try and go and reclaim it. The middle could be the events of the day. I just snuck into a building. That's the rooftop, it's right there. There she is. I've got 900 feet of industrial twine. At the end of that 900 feet of twine, I've got this grappling hook that I shaped out of bailing wire. If and when it falls, that's good night. And the end might be a reflection or the experiences or lessons learned. I got it! I got it! I got it! 
In the tutorial, the beginning might be an introduction to the topic. You know what I don't like? Gimbals. Guess why? The middle could be a step-by-step -step walkthrough of the process. I'm gonna recreate this really simply by using these straps. I've already balanced the iPhone on wide mode. I'm gonna rotate the crane with my phone as we pass around the popcorn. It also has this light which will help light up our faces as it rotates. In the end could be a summary of what was covered and any additional resources for further learning. Looks like I found a place for the Zion Crane M3 after all, and it'll easily fit in my camera bag because it's so small. I'll be using it mainly with the Sony a7C, which just feels like the perfect fit along with the 60 millimeter lens. You can create a series that follows a larger narrative arc. Now, what does that actually look like? This could be a vlog series of a trip that you go on, your experience through high school or college, a series of starting a new experience in life and documenting the journey of that. On the tutorial side of things, a series about a specific topic, whether it be camera gear, tech, anything like that. And in a more narrative filmmaking kind of genre, a story that follows a character or a group of characters. Regardless of what format you choose, the objective is to keep your audience engaged and invested with your story. And some keys in doing that is having compelling visuals and compelling dialogue that helps convey your message and keep your audience coming back for more. I appreciate you guys coming to click and watch this far. I hope these tips have been helpful or at least helping in the right direction when it comes to crafting your stories going forward. So now that we have a basis for writing our story and conceptualizing our story, in what ways will gear enhance our stories? Well, if you subscribe, that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. So uh, that's that question I was talking about. Are you curious? All right, that's a wrap. It's your chance to grab your Grab your attention? No, your audience. But not forcefully. With consent. <laughs>